You are now tuned to BS3 Network. That was an abrupt ending, but bring back that beat <laughs> DJ anyway. Well, I was it's doing the same it. length, man. That's what know. she said. <laughs> it does size matter? That's what she asked. Anyway. Thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> all week, I'll be here all week. <laughs> well, welcome to the forecast. We are back. I know it's the three of us right now, but Wilkes should be joining in here in just a minute. Uh, We should be the four of us back together again, uh, reviewing movies, films, documentaries, a completely different way, four different perspectives. Uh, Just coming at you every Monday, the same time, 830 Central, 930 Eastern. And we we got a good one. We got a good one tonight. Uh, I'm I'm going to give a shout out right now to A-Trap. Well, we're looking like that. We we, we do a good what? A good show? A good movie? A good movie, Ian. Oh no. Oh like, no. Like, we starting off like this. Shut your white mouth drop. <laughs> shut your white mouth. <laughs> hey, I for the first time, A Trap, I heard that <laughs> in context. I had no idea that was what a white that, man. The white preacher that said that. And he was looking out for us when he was saying it. Mm-hmm. He was talking he was to uh, telling his white, white congregation. congregation that if you okay. are uh are not kind to black folks, basically, you saw them in any other way other than so, other than <laughs> because that they are, you better shut your white mouth. Is basically what he said. Yeah, hey, Charlie, man, you, you been, you been, God's people. You've been playing that for years, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, just think about that. And I just randomly came across it a couple of days ago on TikTok. You better shut your white mouth. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just I just say that at random times now. Yeah. It's, just, it's funny. You, you gotta say it. All right, so uh, the I kitchen. Wait to a white person. Shut <laughs> <laughs> your white mouth. Yeah, you, you'll be laughing uh, harder than they will be. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so uh, tonight's review is The Kitchen. It is available on Netflix, and uh, you can check that out now. And uh, you want to give us uh, the breakdown on it? Yes, sir. So uh, the plot is, is in a dystopian future, 2044 London, where all social housing has been eliminated, Izzy and Benji fight the <laughs> world as residents of the kitchen, a community, that, a, a community that refuses to abandon their home. The gap between the rich and the poor is stretched to the limits. The kitchen is one of the only social housing estates left. It was directed by yours. The, the, the forecast on, let's just say that, because we've you know been in his wheelhouse a couple of times, Daniel Coulier. Uh, this is his directorial uh, debut. You normally see him on the other side of the camera, you know, um, on the big screen. Um, so he directed here. here. Uh, and then you have some first timers, you know, also. And Ke- Kiwi Tavares also directed it with him. This was released January 12th, 2024 in the UK. This is our first foray into... A UK release film, mm-hmm. right? On True. the forecast, mm-hmm. and I've been having a lot of people tell me that films in the UK and fi- and some African films, believe it or not, are actually something we should be giving a closer look to. So, yeah. um, I-, I think you know that's for me one of the biggest redeeming qualities of this particular film is uh, it that it was done in the UK. You know, so again, a lot of first timers in the cast, and they show that sometimes acting just comes natural to folks. Yeah, yeah, and and so the main character, which is Izzy, uh, which this guy looks like a mix between, um, well, I it in my notes. He, he looked like Tony Parker and uh, Dave East out here, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know who Dave East is, but... he's a rapper. But uh, did you watch but... the Wu Tang Saga? I didn't get very far. Part of it. Did you I see the guy who played Method Man? I think so. Okay, so that guy. Okay, 
he, he's on uh Nas's label. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, 2020, 2044. And to me, this was there, there's a lot of angles you could go with this. Let's get into uh some initial thoughts. Hopefully, we get uh Wilkes here in a minute. But I mean, there's uh gentrification here, there's um you, you know, you if they just want to build something where you live and they could do everything they can to get you out. Eminent uh, so, domain. Right. So I mean, there was a lot of different levels to this. I felt like the the there was a good mixture of like suspense and known. Which to me that makes a good film because you what was that? <laughs> Did you just hit a drop or something? No, nah, I thought that was you. No, I didn't hit a drop. But for some reason you cut out. You know, you got muffled real bad when I heard the drop. Oh, our end it sounded like somebody opened up a drink. Yeah, this, I don't know that no, that wasn't me. I thought that was you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, I, <laughs> I see you looking over there. You push it so. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to make sure it ain't no a hand over here that ain't supposed to be in here. Uh, but yeah, I felt like it was a good uh, bit of suspense, the unknown, uh, leaving you wanting, wanting more, wondering what's happening. To me, that that's 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 a good film. Uh, so let's let's uh, initial thoughts, A Trap. Uh, as you said, it was, it was thrilling. It was intriguing. It was uh, poignant. It 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 it, uh, um, it allowed you to see no matter where you are, disenfranchised people are treated the same, and, and which yeah. drew me in immediately. So it was I, I really appreciated and shout out to Daniel because he looked this movie unlike the one we did last week looked as if it it was properly done. Yeah, like it hated or indifferent. If this was a quality move, it was quality production. Yeah, there, there, there was some thought put into it. There was some, uh, you, you know, you could tell that there there was some engineering into it that they really had to come up with a a good story. Now, I, I mean, it had some, you know, you kind of figure type moments, but the storyline I felt like was was great. No. Uh, let's just say this. The story was better than the execution. Let me just say okay. this. Okay. I had to rank the two. The story was better than the execution. It was a great story, you know, and had a lot of potential. Uh, I thought it moved a little slow early on mm -hmm. and the whole, it left you wanting thing. That's not necessary. There's some movies that leave you wanting that are good movies and it's good that they leave you wanting. And they can actually kind of set up this whole, you know, trilogy kind of situation if they want it, you know, yeah. based on that. This ain't that kind of left you wanting in my estimation, you know, and I'll, yeah. I'll save the rest for later. Wilkes, hurry up and get back, man. <laughs> God, <nah. laughs> hey, man, this a hey, shout out to the to the ex formerly known as Twitter people. We got uh, 23 people tuning in over there right now. Yeah. I, appreciate yeah. yeah I, I, I don't typically send uh stuff out uh on the twitter right before the show but i sit i sent something out to some folks on the bs3 network twitter so yeah that's whatever we did there we need to keep doing yeah yeah d great thank you for tuning in yeah y'all if you're listening on if you're watching on twitter right now please say something in the comments and let us know who you are so we can kind of see what cross section we're getting uh let us know if you've seen this movie and things of that nature yeah yeah, OC, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it too. Overton, you still living single, partner? <laughs> uh, all right, so. Um, you own the building by now, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Isaac, also known as Izzy, uh, you know, it kind of introduces him. Huh? Izzy? <laughs> Boo this man, tomato. Um, but he, he works at a place called Life After Life, mm. which I could a hundred percent see this happening because you have so many people, mm. you only have so much area. And I could so for me, this was uh this was more realistic than it was futuristic in a lot of these moments. Because if you can go to different areas and they're trying to kick people out and they'll do whatever, turn the water off, do whatever to get you to move. So even though it was 2044, 
So this could be 2024. It probably is 2024 in some areas. Mm-hmm. So give me, give me, give me your thoughts on uh, that life after life. <laughs> uh, oh. Yeah, being realistic for sure. They're gonna have to get creative with ways that they uh, uh, bury people and whatnot. In fact, as a result of just pure space, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody wouldn't try to pass some law that requires cremation. Yeah. If you follow what I'm saying, I, you know, yeah, again, yeah. whether the, the, the validity of it and the probability of it passing and all that other kind of stuff, you know, is up for debate, but you know, I could see it happening. I mean, hell, there's a lot of people don't know that we actually ship our trash to other countries. Mm. Some people don't even know that. That our I trash. Didn't, I didn't know that we ship trash to other countries. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. We ship some trash to other companies. You know, once these landfills and, you know, certain states may do it a little differently or whatnot. Hell, you know, if you been, if you lived in certain parts of Texas, there's certain parts of Texas, you can get some real cheap property. You're going to be living close to a landfill. Your yeah. house will be brand new. It's going to be pretty. But every time you walk outside, you're gonna smell. You're gonna smell. Uh, 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 <laughs> Poopylicious, you know. Uh, she, that's what you smell. Right. So, uh, but yeah, you know, the U.S. sends its trash, ships its trash to other countries. That, because again, if you just think about, sometimes, do you ever reflect when you're taking out the trash? Like, God, dog, we consume a lot. We are yeah. consumers. We consume a lot. Yeah. You know. And, and even so, with even with recycling, you know, yeah. my, my wife's like, you don't even know if they're recycling this half stuff. of it at the very least, so like, half of yeah. it doesn't get recycled. And my response is, I don't care what happens after it leaves here. They say, <laughs> put it in the blue bin, I will put it in the blue bin. I don't know what happens, it ain't my business. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, yeah, so so my point, you know, to all that is, is that you know, who knows, you know, and then also. You know, would you be surprised if there were uh, cemeteries out there that right now, if you ain't checked on a loved one or if they think all their descendants and stuff like that ain't around or not living, that they won't reuse the doggone uh, uh, spot? <laughs> oh, yeah. You, you follow what I'm saying? I mean, they, I would. They've built, they built on top of, we, we know that. We've seen that in a couple of films we watch. Mm-hmm. They build on top of cemeteries. So you got a house on top of a cemetery. Yeah, here in Dallas, if I'm not mistaken, I want to say, there, there, there was a black owned, uh, uh, I think it was in Dallas, the Dallas area, black owned, uh, 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 what do they call? Help me out with this. Not cemeteries, a black owned uh, funeral home. Oh, funeral funeral home. home was not uh, cremating bodies like they were supposed to or something of that nature, you know, yeah. uh, and got ended up getting busted. You know, they were stacking them deep and selling them cheap shit in the back. That was in <laughs> Chicago. It was that in Chicago? Mm-hmm. Okay. My dad's buried there. At that funeral home that was tied up. Yeah. yeah, but it, it was in a, a good a uh, good the sad thing is Tropicana Field in uh, Florida, where the Florida Marlins play. Mm-hmm. Some type of some type of cemetery. Yeah, I believe it. Yeah. And um there is no law against that. So they can do it and nobody you can't sue them, you oh, can't do it. Right. Yeah, it, it's, I'm sure it's a situation where, you know, 80% of the people, I mean, because think about it, at some point, in some of these cemeteries, we got some old cemeteries out there. Yeah. We got some We got some cemeteries so old, they used to call them graveyards. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my point is, is that the people looking after them or visiting or whatever the case may be, long gone. Yeah. Where, where, where me and Wilkes work, there's a, there's a, I guess, a makeshift cemetery oh, right around in- the corner. Work. Let's say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a cemetery right around the corner, and it's probably got I don't know ten to fifteen headstones there. It's a gate around it. I mean, you would you would not think uh, of a Harry Hines and Royal that there would be a cemetery that's in the middle so of. We're not gonna give me some sound, but we can, we can hear you. Yeah, it's, it's 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 choppy and. <laughs> 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 but um yeah so i i felt like that was uh that was realist and uh he didn't want to do that job man uh, he did not he was basically just selling people plots just because he had to do it yeah yeah and, that it was was and, I, and that's the piece i kind of missed a little bit so basically what he was trying to do 
they were basically gonna cremate your loved one and plant right. them, and you were gonna basically be the soil for the and tree. And a planter, yeah. yeah. Right, yeah, and it was yeah. a small planter and whatever. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. I don't want to be no tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, All right Wilkes. I, I guess I'm up. I, I, the, yeah. sound, the sound is the trash. Yeah. 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 Oh, great. All right. Well, so what about, what about you, H Rap? Was you what did you think about the the likelihood, the realism, et cetera, in the life after life theory concept? Uh I think that's actually I think it's a it's a uh, I think it's a thousand percent chance. I think fifty percent of it is going on now, as you stated. I mean, there there's documentation and there are actually organizations that are designed to stop people from doing this as we speak. It's this sister out of Florida. She she goes throughout the country and she helps people. She helps these uh, 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 entities help stop these entities from buying this land and resurf resurfacing it, resurfacing it. So yeah, I mean, I think uh, again, it's this book that I reference on my program on a regular basis. Uh, I can't think of it. I'm at, at this point. It's, it is what BJ is thirty one this year, so it was thirty three years ago. I read this book. And they said, watch movies and television. They'll tell you what your enemy is out to do. This is a preview. This is a preview of what's going on. And, you know, people, we got, you know, Ben was joking. He was saying it tongue in cheek. But they bank on people thinking like Ben said he thinks. Once this trash leaves here, I ain't going to worry about it. Like me. Ben was talking about trash. I my mother, this will be 14 years. My mother be gone this year. I've been out there once. Yeah. yeah. And I don't have any plans on ever going again. Yeah. And I, I'm with you. That ain't my thing. You know, I mean, I go uh, to the cemetery with my family every now and then when we go in to visit my uncle or, you know, something like that. But it ain't my thing, you know, to keep coming back, you know. So, yeah, I could, I could see it. And especially on some of them, you know, 1800s. <laughs> you know, right bur burials and whatnot. Right, right. Wolf, wolf. Can y'all hear me? Okay. Uh, still, still sound the same. Still choppy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I tested this thing all day to see if it was gonna work. That's what she said. No, can't get it up. Is <laughs> gonna, gonna call Bob Dole. <laughs> Hey, even when you're underwater, you're still cracking jokes. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> what what am I now? It's not like shit. I'm pretty sure it does. It's just yeah. It's just it's just it's choppy, you know. It's like I said, it really sounds like you're under underwater. Uh, oh, that's, that's, that's just, fucking gay. <laughs> hey, this what CJ said. CJ said, "Will's got that Xbox 360 bike, man." <laughs> The OG out of the box. Ah, All right, cancel. <laughs> All right, so uh, they the, basically they were in a dorm. Uh, they were in a project dorm. They had to share showers. Uh, they had to. They didn't have food, so one of the guys, Staples, which was one of, we'll, we'll get to his character here in a minute. He was, you know, he had his crew. They would go, they would, they would jack a, a, a Amazon or or a Kroger delivery truck and bring the food to to the to the neighborhood because they didn't. There wasn't no Uber Eats. There wasn't no, you know, they could just go and get whatever they wanted. Uh, so they had to really be really resourceful, and that that immediately made me think of, you know, college. You got shared showers. You don't. You can't at cer certain point. You can't bring food in, and it it was a. Uh, it was definitely dark. So this movie is not, you know, hooray. There's like ha great happy moments in it. It's that's really not what it is. This is a a a dark movie, uh, but I think it's telling a a a true story. Uh, so yeah, uh, give me your thoughts on that on that on the setup they were living in because it wasn't really a, a project. It was a project yeah. is almost a step up to what yeah, and they, they were living in drones and the announcements they were making was like you you're illegally occupying privately owned property so basically what it's telling me is that these were either some projects before 
right? Mm -hmm. You know, because you could tell the way it was set up that there were doors, you know, so it was set up like a uh, what you'd see in New York, you know, uh, in the boroughs, these high rise uh, projects, basically, you know. Yeah. Uh, now, of course, they look like they were a lot more futuristic, which would make sense, right? Some of the designs of it and where it was going, it wasn't just straight up and down buildings, right? Um, yeah, so uh, but it sounds like basically what it looked like to me is that when whatever catastrophe took place, you know, whether this business went out of business, you know, this or, or, or this residence, you know, basically went out of business. Some people chose not to leave. Maybe they said, OK, we're shutting down. We're not giving you any services. You got to leave because they were getting ready to tear it down and build new uh, some property or whatever. I know. Was probably what they, you know, yeah. right. You know, and they were trying to get these people to uh, move. Uh, and these uh, these people also, to a certain extent, seem like they were off the grid. But yeah. that was, but but again, only so much, right? Because Izzy himself was on the grid because mm -hmm. he was communicating with this other housing place right. that was on the grid or back in, you know, maybe what you'd call general population. You know, yeah. These no doubt were the rebels. And again, as the as the plot says, that this was the last remaining social housing estate. But it wasn't you could you couldn't really call it that because it wasn't being run, cared for, et cetera, yeah. by any entity. You know, right. they were just right. occupying this. The fact that they had water running, they were doing that on their own. You know, yeah, they got they had their own radio station set up in there. Yeah. Uh uh but run by the Lord Kitchener, who was a former athlete over in the UK. Mm -hmm. He's a former athlete, you know, a world class athlete. You know, that, you're talking guy, about in real life, the Lord Kitchen. In real life, yeah. The, okay. the guy who played the DJ. He okay. was a retired athlete, you know, world class athlete in real life. Uh, so they had their own DJ. Uh, again, they had enough to have some technology because, again, think about the way he was getting in. I mean, there was touchscreen stuff and whatnot, you know, so yeah. they were still getting their technology in. You know, you obviously had some people living there who had some knowledge, you know. Um, so it was really like this city, you know. Uh, uh, that was being run. It's not like what you would think when you think about a post a lot, uh, post apocalyptic society where they're living in tents and there's right. no, you know, technology or no running water. They're going to have to use a body of water somewhere and that kind of thing. It wasn't like that. It was just like everyday society to a certain extent, except their doors, instead of being regular residential doors, they were steel of some sort. Uh, right. and they did that because there were raids every now and then to try to get as many of them out of there as possible by the police, you know, and I'm sure the police were doing it at the behest of the owner of the property, trying to get them out of there. And they right. would just raid every now and then when a raid happened, they started banging on the pan. So everybody knew that was their alarm. You know, that was yep. a sound of the alarm. So everybody knew get into your apartment, you know, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, that was the year. That was the year uh, yep. moment. That, mm -hmm. that was calling out, you know. But yeah. hey, the DJ, the DJ part, man, I felt like was was a was a dope part of this, because I mean, and that just shows kind of to a trap's point. We talk about this all the time. Whatever the worst possible situation we're in, we know we we just prone and given the the wherewithal to just flip it, make it the best that we can. And he would come on in the morning, and everybody, you know, they get up and do what they had to do for the day. Yeah. Uh, but I feel like that was a that was a really dope aspect aspect of this. Hey, Trap. Yeah, I mean, you know what? We caught the funny thing is this: we called it futuristic because we looked at the year. Yeah, twenty years from now, man. True. <laughs> See, I think because we were away. born in the nineteen hundreds, we hear twenty twenty anything, and it sounds like whoa. But now that we're deep into the, we're two decades into the 2000s, 2020, anything don't sound so far away. And again, I just think, I don't think, I don't think this is far-fetched at all. I, yeah. I think this is right. This is right. <laughs> this is, believe it or not, man, you know, you know, you always ask me at the end of the show, what is my show tomorrow about? It's about things that, that could potentially lead to this. Yeah, you know, DC and Philadelphia 
they even acted some laws that resembles exactly what was going on. And it's, it's, it's spooky. Watching this, I was like, oh, because I found myself disconnected this weekend. And then I watched this and it, it pretty much wrote my show for Tuesday. So it, it doesn't seem far-fetched at all to me. No. And we, we are looking at the, we are on the precipice of this, in my personal opinion. Yeah, if, if somebody asked me to say a phrase that could describe our society in one phrase, it would be sleight of hand. Yeah. Because that's what's happening, sleight of hand. They are getting you to look right and they throw in the left. Oh, you remember y'all remember uh Sugar Ray, you know, would do the wind up with one hand and hit you with the other one. That's mm -hmm. basically what's happening, you know, in everything from whether it be, you know, what laws are getting passed, what bills are being proposed. That is why. And hey, if I was a senator or congressman or whatever, one of the first things I would do is say <laughs> that you cannot put in no law or put in no bill, something that ain't got to do with that damn bill. You know, like they slipping in stuff to say, okay, we can go take away your uh, we, we're going to reduce the rights of a tenant and we're going to put it in this bill that's got to do with health care. It ain't got shit to do with it, mm -hmm. yeah. but they're going to slip it in over there, you know, and this was put in on House Bill number 192.378 and one. What it ain't got shit to do with this bill. A bill needs right. to be on its top one bill, one topic, right. you know, as simple as that, because they, they slipping it in like that. Uh, and, and you lose rights because you want the big shit. You want the, what's being publicized, you know? Yeah. We can get extra apple in our apple shit. Yeah. I want that, you know, but yeah. you don't understand, but that extra apple costs you seven oranges. Mm -hmm. yeah. You missed it. You know? Right. right. So right. again, that's all this is a sleight of hand. Oh, guess what? Now all of a sudden these suckers going to start talking about aliens and stuff. <laughs> you know, that they done been so closed lipped about now right. we've been uh, talking about it. Slide of hand. They trying Atrap says it on the show all the time. If they're talking about this, they're probably not trying to get you to listen to, and discuss that. But yeah. they talking about they're not trying to get you. They don't care nothing about you paying attention to that. They hiding something else. Slide of hand. Right. Shell game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is probably uh blue streak. I think that's you. Let us know. But uh thank you for tuning in. Shut all up. right, so uh, what the huh? heck that happened on Twitter today? I don't know, man, but and I don't know uh, if they can comment or not because I've asked the yeah, viewers on Twitter to comment. Yeah, probably. yeah, you, you can comment. Those on Twitter, uh, you can comment. Leave us a comment. Let us know where you where you're watching. But yeah, it, it is uh, it is blowing up. Uh, so we appreciate that. Appreciate that support. Thank you for watching. Uh, she said, "It's me. It's me." What's going yeah, on, Blue Street? I figured. All right. So Benji's mom passes away. Uh, and he's at the life after life and they have this basically machine that the you know the person's laying there this is basically the the funeral it was only him it was only benji and his mom and then izzy kind of comes out of the back and he starts to come down and you get a sense that he obviously knows who she is but you don't know the relation uh the relationship between him and benji's mom they end up kind of Bringing her into the cream cremator, uh, basically. What? Uh, crematory, maybe the crematory. I, I don't know if you're talking about bluebell ice cream, <laughs> uh, 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 cremating somebody. Hey, you talking about the or what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know the exact term. Okay, <laughs> crematorium. Crematorium. Okay, go into the crematorium, and it, and that's it. You don't see you don't see the person again. I hope Next. Craig's listening so he can sit. We always try to put your education in our face. I hope Craig is listening. He, he, he did give us a thumbs up, so he, he probably yeah. watching. Uh, okay. Yeah, what's up? Todd Lux, Kietra Lee, uh, and Craig, what's going on, y'all? And, uh, and, and Todd Lutz, real quick, appreciate the, the stars that you gave us. We appreciate that a lot, man, on Facebook. Appreciate that support. That's my uh, cousin. So we appreciate okay. that. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, we appreciate that support. It goes 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 far for us. <laughs> what? I'm just laughing at the crematorium. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. He's talking about blue bear, Ben and James. I don't know. Uh, so you know, you you 
what, what, what's your thoughts on that moment? And also, I'm going to go to this question that, uh, Doc, that you used last week. You know, any any plot surprises? So when you see Benji coming and you see Izzy there in your head, are you starting to think, is that his dad? Or what, where, where, where was your mind going? Hey, Trap, first. Oh, well, me, um, I, I, didn't, it, I, don't, I don't know if it would be a plot surprise. It was just, this was an, a, a very unique film in regards to the actual plot. You know what I mean? We saw the, 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 the miscarriage of justice, the inhumane conditions and things of that nature. We saw that. But I didn't know what to expect when it came to the young man. But what I did like was once, you know, it, it showed once you put us in a horrific situation, we do uh, metaphorically circle the wagons and become a family. We reconnect and become a family in these harsh and ter- horrific conditions. Yeah. Okay. Let, let me jump in right there. Uh, so on the plot situation, I, I'm going to say some bitch was moving too slow to have any too many surprises on the plot there. Cause you can see them coming a mile away. Uh, <laughs> You know, they never did answer the question. <laughs> they never did answer the question of whether Izzy uh, was, uh, I can't remember the guy's name, Benji's dad. They never answered that question. They got close. He never did give a direct answer to it, you know. He gave, uh, he gave a nod. He gave a nod yeah, at the end. Get it, trust me. When I say in my research for this, they, it is being debated long and hard that he never gave a you know, uh, yeah. uh, uh yeah, he, he, he he did a what's up. I mean, he, it was <laughs> it was pretty close. Say is I hit? <laughs> what he uh, trying to say? But he don't know. Yeah, that was his daddy, man. Anyway, probably so. But you know, but my, baby, point, but my my point in this in my in this particular comment on as far as the plot twist is concerned, A Trap made a point that says whenever we are faced with adversity, we rise to the occasion, right? Mm-hmm. And still find joy. And we we level set what happy is. We level set mm-hmm. what success is. We level set what joy is, right? Uh, however, what this film shows is, because you guess what? You didn't just see all black folks. Mm-hmm. What it shows is, is that the true social structure has more to do with finances than it does color. That yeah. remember I said earlier, sleight of hand. Mm-hmm. That's this that same thing. Racism is sleight of hand. I'm not trying to say it's not real. I'm not trying to say it's not real. Don't don't trust me. I'm not trying to say that it is real, but that's not the issue. The issue is social status based on socioeconomic situations. And if you ever paid attention, country white folks have a lot in common with us hmm. from their diet to their hmm. music love to their, you, you know, we, we got a lot in common. Unfortunately, because that sleight of hand is working so well, we don't stop long enough to figure that out. Yeah. And we think it's, it's division. Yeah. That's and right. It's, it's, it's more of a, a closer similarity than we. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of that comes from, how it all started. The, the country folk, the country white folks, was a lot of them was raised by uh, 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 house Negroes, right? They're the the big mom in there cooking and making the mm-hmm. cornbread and making the red beans and rice and all this other stuff. So that's where they get their taste from, right. you know. Amongst other things, hey, you talking about culture vultures? Guess what? They was getting the culture long when it when it when it was just by osmosis, so to speak, right? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just by proximity. You know, they were getting it. And guess what? There are story after story after story of little white kids being more in love with the mammy than they mama. Than their own mama. Yeah. Skip yeah. Bayless alleges that. Say that again. Skip Bayless alleges that. He was raised by, according to him, I don't, I don't believe him. Uh, Please, I can't believe him. Say, but <laughs> he, he alleges that he was raised by a black woman. Yeah, I believe. I believe there's a lot of folks out there like that, you know. So again, you know, this ain't, this ain't, this is not about race here, you know, because again, they showed them and they were, you know, shit. When you put, think about that for a second. I promise you, put everybody on the same social, socioeconomic situation and put them in a, in the, in the same place and watch them joke, jokers assimilate with each other and start getting on the squad and team up. You know, I promise yeah. you they will. 
Yeah. You know, and I'm not going to say it's going to be 100 percent, but it ain't going to be 100 percent nowhere under any circumstances, you know, but you're going to see my folks, black folks and white folks all of a sudden start getting along a lot better when they oh we all we all only making a hundred dollars a month. You know, and I'm exaggerating, but you get my point, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, but you know what I, I, I would I would give you pushback on saying that racism isn't a thing. Race isn't a thing. Race is a social construct. There's no place in the history of man that race was actually a thing. Race is something that was brought about with yeah. capitalism. Race is the is the uh, bastard child of capitalism. Yeah. So I would told I would, that's the only thing I would give you pushback on what you said. Race isn't a thing. Racism isn't a thing. Racism is created by the power structure. You know, people look at things like you know they want us to believe that the world is shaped like this, straight yeah. across, straight up, and you know, straight across. But the world is really like this. You know, cisgender straight, uh, uh, cisgender straight, uh, Christian white men, and then it breaks on down to the lowest person on the totem pole, which traditionally is a black woman. So you're right. When when you put people in chaotic, when you put people in impoverished situations, if they're not striving to be at this end of the spectrum, they traditionally get along. You see it all the time on things like TikTok and Instagram. Where you go, I'm like, like they got this thing. Of course, I'm from Chicago. We do this. We say car instead of saying car. Mm -hmm. And now I've seen a lot of people. Of course, I'm a redneck. Of course, I like fried chicken. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm a, I'm a redneck. Of course, <laughs> I like black music. You know, because yeah. when you put people in chaotic situations, if they deal with each other, they get along. This is the create. This is the purpose of the creation of the whole race concept. Because as long as I got Brian Williams arguing with Peter Vesey. Mm -hmm. He not understanding what Elon Musk is doing. He's not paying attention to Elon Musk robbing him. Right. But yeah. If they that's why people like Martin King got murdered. If Martin King was cool as long as he was saying, Black people get your act together. The minute he created the poor people's campaign, wait a minute, you got to die home, boy. Yeah. Fred Hampton, two Fred years Hampton, later, a year probably. later. A year later, Fred Hampton started uniting the, uh, the, the Aces, the, the Latino gangs, the Black gangs, and the Black Panther Party of Self-Defense. You see Huey, when you watch the videos of Huey and, and, and uh, uh, Bobby Seals out there uh Sacramento, they are not standing there with all Black people. This is, of course, they their focus was to protect the Black community. And I've actually heard Bobby Seals say, and I'm going to post something about it tomorrow. Uh, uh, he said, as long as we can get you, of course, we talk to our people, but if we can stop, people are going to see how we interact and then they're going to incorporate what we're doing into their thing. So, of course, Ronald Reagan turns this into a terrorist group. Of course, the United States federal government and the FBI label the, the Black Panther Party self-defense as a terrorist group. But if you listen, you hear Fred, you hear Huey, you hear Bobby, you hear Stokely and anybody else who was affiliated with that movement say all power to all people. Yeah. And, and it's just a matter of reading the constitution and you realize even those people owning enslavers, they knew that people were gonna, they couldn't stand rich people either. But the thing is when you get wicked people who can read, read things and manipulate things as you stated, the whole situation gets run them up. Right? And here we are talking yeah. about black folks and white folks. Yeah. And just for clarification, when I say, you know, that, you know, I, I'm not trying to offend anybody there by saying racism doesn't exist in its higher truth. Yes, it doesn't. But you can't tell that to the people who experience it on a daily basis. It exists yeah. for them. Right. You know, uh, but true it's a social construct you know meant yeah. to it, it should uh, be called classism yeah yeah, yeah to distract yeah. you know um and and again shout out to you know the x book x uh, excuse me x <laughs> formerly known uh i was gonna say xbox because i saw that comment <laughs> we'll see but again, again viewers uh, again if this is your first time tuning into the forecast yes we review movies this is not your mom and dad is Siskel, Siskel and Ebert by any stretch of the imagination. We only review one movie per show, not several. 
And a lot of times that move is just simply a <laughs> launch pad for us to talk about what we're going through on a daily basis as a society, you know. Uh, hell, if you'd have tuned in to our King Kong versus Godzilla uh, movie, <laughs> they're coming out with another one, right? That looks fantastic. But we start yeah. talking about some whole other stuff that you wouldn't have got out of King Kong and Godzilla. So right. I promise you, uh, this is the place you want to tune in. So we appreciate it. And if you have the ability to comment, please comment. I'm not seeing any from those viewers. So I, I don't know what's taking place, but there's too many of them to where somebody wouldn't want to comment. But we yeah. need to uh, acknowledge you, though. Know. Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely, we definitely appreciate that support. And, um, yeah, whatever whatever is happening, yeah, definitely just say hello, say where you tuning in from. Uh, and we we uh, appreciate that. So um immediately I, I thought it was on my mind. <laughs> I can't get the cremate thing out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, at least I got you laughing, man. That's that's my my, my, that's my, my job call. is done, man. My job is done. Uh but yeah, I thought that was uh I thought that was Benji's dad because it was just the timing of how he just came up and 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 then you just seen from the from there on they were you know tied together. Benji was looking for him, and to me, I think another meaning in this is how many kids this Benji's age needs guidance, and they're looking for guidance, and they can either go uh, Staples, which was he was he was a rebel. He did, I think he did give him some value though. So and I want to get to that, you know, later on. <laughs> that even though this this guy was a rebel, he was giving him some wisdom, and he he had more, uh, you know, more balls than than Izzy did. But you know, we'll talk about that. But or, or you go uh, Izzy, and you got two different directions, and you need somebody. Benji clearly needed somebody. He had nobody, uh, and I felt like that was another moment in this. When you're when you're that young and you need guidance and you're impressionable, you're gonna go to whoever is showing you the most attention, and I, and that's kind of how it went. So I felt like that was a another powerful part of this, dog. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, kids need boundaries. They crave boundaries. It is a misconception to think that they don't. You know, yeah. uh, do they uh, appear to the most definitely they do. You know. But think about how many, again, art imitates life, right? How many plots has it been in to where uh, the, the bad kid or the seemingly bad kid tells the good kid who's getting there uh, has boundaries all over the place? Well, at least your mom and dad cares. Right. Mine could care yeah. less when I come in, when I go to bed, when I eat, when I do this. You know, kids with no boundaries don't like that. You know, uh, it's counter, you know, to what they feel or society to be able to articulate that, but that ain't what they want, you know? So I think this was a prime example of that, you know, and what this movie did do is show you how that we're much more alike than we are different, whether it's across the waters, you know, across the big ocean, big ocean water. Who said that? Uh, whether it's across <laughs> the waters uh, <laughs> or whatever, you know, because, again, even the terminology it was the same. Right. They were saying, keep that same energy. Damn, mm -hmm. bro. They were saying the same terminology that we use over here. And, and again, it is because the freedom of information, the flow of information now is at such a rate and we have such access and I'm telling you right now, which is when superpowers fall. Yeah. Information flows freely. Superpowers fall. It is the yeah. reason why old superpowers used to shut down the printing press and stuff like that. Because they didn't want the freedom of information to be flowing like that. Right. So, again. Hey, Trump. I mean, again, again, once again, I'm forced to agree with you totally. And you just started, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna back map from the beginning of your conversation. The falling of a, uh, the, the the fall the falling of the superiority complex starts with media, and you see our government, the United States federal government, currently is in the midst of attempting to shut down TikTok. This is a fascist yeah. movie. And, uh, uh, this is fascist. This is right out the fascist playbook. This fascism 101. You don't agree with me. All you have to do is go back 100 years and see the Adolf Hitler turn the media. He basically, Donald Trump is all but, he might as well just be saying, and in chapter four of Mein Kampf, 
he is walking right through Adolf Hitler's playbook. He is alienating people at the bottom rung of society, the migrants. Then he's going to go after the next group of people, which were the homosexuals. He's doing the homosexuals now. And then he went after the gypsies. Hmm. And the gypsies would be us. And then he's just going to continue to do it. This dude has literally walked out in the last 36 hours and said, I want to be a dictator. And if I don't get reelected, it's going to be a bloodbath. So hmm. to double down on what you just stated, you want to you want to attack people. You destroy the information. You keep people as ignorant as possible. What is the Republican Party doing right now? They're trying to defund the schools. They're trying to do away with schools. you got Sarah Huckabee Sanders in Arkansas making the legal working age. I think it's down to 12 now. Yeah, so yeah. Basically, what? you're going to put children in factories. And, you know, who does not want to help their parents, their struggling parents? So right. you're going to put people back in ignorant situation that goes right back to Europe. A couple hundred years ago, only 2% of the people in Europe could read. That's why they used to tell you what the Bible said, and you had to go along with it, because who's willing to argue with God? So, yeah, you, this is exact, This is a perfect example of what's going on in this movie. I think another thing to double down on the dad thing, from the dad's perspective, this is also, again, destroying the concept of, like, uh, I would even say, again, this is the second week in a row well, art, as to use your phraseology, art was imitating life. Mm-hmm. What um, Last week, it was an inappropriate relationship with a client and an attorney. Right. Okay, this week, it is a, a, a part two of that. Part two of that is this. Fonnie Lewis, Fonnie Willis was calling her father daddy. To me, that was ingratiating her father. That was putting her father, you know, some people may go, why was she using daddy? Actually, daddy is almost the greatest term of endearment or honorific that you can give someone. Because he's my father. He's my daddy. That's right. What, man. What daddies are embracing to children. Daddies ingratiate themselves to their children. Daddies prop up young people and make and may and turn a young person into a superhero. This is what this man was doing when when, when the when the negativity ran up on them. What he do? Hey, hey, go do it. A couple. Hey, he not, we are in a chaotic situation, but I'm going to take time to make sure you enjoy life. I'm going to take you skating. I'm going to show you love. Simultaneously, right. I'm going to show you that the world is chaotic. And when yeah. the chaos shows up, I'm going to be your father because I'm going to tell you, go on out there and finish playing while I handle this negativity. So, right. again, this is, a, this, this, this is why I enjoyed this film so much because it was truly art imitating life. It was elevating black men and black fatherhoods with black young men instead of us always getting this trope that we don't take care of our children. I don't know if this young man is mine, but I'm gonna treat him as such, I'm gonna love him as such, and I'm gonna protect him as such. So yeah, that's something that I truly enjoy. Yeah, that, and that you just that that's gonna be a Queen Three and King show, father versus daddy. I'm gonna we gonna break that one down a little bit. Um yeah, because I think that's 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 a, a dope concept to say the least. Uh, what about your soundtrack, H. Rap? We talked about the DJ a little bit. Did you? Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, since y'all get on me all the time, <laughs> I was paying attention to the movie. But again, you know, it's not like you, that's. I, I'm so focused and engulfed in the conversation and the context the that concept. the music is secondary now. When we do the throwbacks, if y'all ever notice, when we do the throwbacks, I'm on top of that music because that music is part of the conversation. When you yeah. hear Eddie and, and Superfly talk, you hear Curtis in the back for you know, so it's it, it's part of it. Today's soundtrack is a underlying addition, right? So right. that's why. But yeah, I, I, I've been I've been more cognizant. Uh, of the music, it was it was great selections and things of that nature. It was it, it was almost op- uh, almost like an opera. Yeah, they had some uh, some fresh cuts in there, uh, some old school cuts like "How About Us" by Champagne, uh, mm-hmm. "Candy" by Cameo. They yeah. really damn no, they candy was they jam, you know. Yeah, you know? And, and, and real quick before you go, what 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 they what made me see and all of us see how how similar we are. Everybody, electric slide man. You yeah. do electric slide oh, everywhere. Yeah. yeah, I had to. We I had to t- t- touch on that real quick. Go ahead. Yeah, no, that's it. I was just giving those uh, old school shout outs on the songs, but one yeah. of the songs was the one of the little fresh songs because again, there's a whole 
genre and sector of music that we are not exposed to on a regular basis. And that's the, you know, so, so uh, again, blacks or Africans over in London, I, I think a good portion of our society doesn't realize how deep we run over there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, a good portion of society are, are clueless to that, you know, and so as a result, the culture that they have bred over there, along with a little of ours, right, you know, you still got your tempo and uh, your rhythm and your things of that nature, right? Uh, there's a whole new music, a couple, it was a couple of songs on there that are now on my uh, pool playlist because they so banging, you know, and I'm like, wow, this is what's up? You know, they get, give a little bit of a techno vibe. They give a little bit of a house vibe. It's like you're taking techno and hip hop and you mix and they had a baby. It's basically yeah. what they with, or you take techno reggae and hip hop and you mix it all together. And that's what you come out with there, you know? Yeah. So if you're a music yeah. fan, checking out some of the stuff you get over in the Africans from London is I, I promise the you. Afro beat is hard, man. The Afro beat is hard. Yeah. Yeah. And we, you know, we <laughs> everywhere. Uh, it is, <laughs> and if you and if you pay the fee five dollars a month, you can get this behind the scenes combo. <laughs> I promise you. you yeah, yeah. It uh, is. And another thing, let me ask a trap. I don't know if being you was old enough necessarily to really be paying attention to this. You might have been in college and on some other stuff. But did you get the Total Recall vibes? I immediately, I, I expected to see a woman with three breasts coming down the thing, you know, right? Because that was one of the biggest things in Total Recall. But did you yeah. get kind of Total Recall kind of feeling of this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what? I literally said, I was like, this is Total Recall versus meets Mad Max. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there mm. you go. Because it okay, was, I do remember Mad Max. It makes sense because it was some, uh, you know, uh, dystopian uh, kind of, you know, tough times they going back to the you know stone ages so to speak you yeah. know but they had some technology so yeah which would be the total recall for because total recall was the it was a similar situation in the fact that it was a struggling sect of society being represented there right mm -hmm. uh and they had the same kind of hustlers and stuff like that you know mm -hmm. um and but but they're still you know kind of back in the in, in the gap so to speak Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's the yeah. But I got Total Recall vibes all day long, man. That you know, now that I'm thinking about it, another movie. I, this is just right on the fly as you were talking. Book of Eli as well. Yeah, mm, that's a good yeah. one. Yep, 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 yep. Wilkes, Wilkes. Can y'all hear me? Yes. Oh, yes. Ah, yes. ah. <laughs> shut your ass up. <laughs> <laughs> My. I had to Hey, he said like he said like Earth again. <laughs> again. Right. My my God. God. <laughs> I had to switch to my damn razor, Mike. I was like, whatever, man. This is trash. Uh, yeah. We can hear you clearly. Uh, well, I had to switch to my. I had to go to my big boy, Mike. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, obviously, we've uh, we've talked about it a lot, but get yeah. kind of well. Good, cause it was good because the movie was trash anyway. Uh, oh. Hey, Mike's, oh. Uh, no. That's why I wanted Will to see Because Will, they've been giving it high praise, bro. Movie was, movie was trash. Uh, yeah, not with it. You're not going to fucking bury me like a plant and then bring me back <laughs> as some fertilizer. No, no, sorry. I watched this movie twice, and I was like, okay. What twice? It? Yeah. Twice. This, is, this, is not a, this is not a two-timer right here. Man. Yeah, because he yeah, yeah, the first time I watched it, I was like, oh, it's almost over with. I was like, oh, I better rewatch it so I can you know, say, oh, no. No. Yeah, yeah, because it didn't lead you yeah. nowhere, right? Wilkes, right? It was garbage. I You're was, done. You're like, what was the point of this? Right. It was only good when it was going off. I was like, what is this? I was like, <laughs> no, no, hold no, on. No. We're not talking about me and nah. Copa. Nah, no, we we talking, no, me and Copa was talking, last week. Now you sure? No, we, you sure? We talking about this movie, Kitchen. This <laughs> yeah. movie, yeah. No, nah. it showed us a lot of stuff, but it's like it. You know, what was your point? You know, at the end. yeah, I, I, I honestly now I will say this: I felt like you know they were watching obviously the, the things that have been going on with these mass robberies mm -hmm. in Las Vegas, uh, not Las Vegas, but Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and just around the country yeah. in San Francisco. I think they were pulling from that, which I get it, and then also it was kind of like one of those uh, you know eat the rich kind of thing uh, vibes, you know, and. Yeah. I, I get what they were doing, but it was just like, oh, what what else can you give me here? Like, 
but that's just me. That's yeah. Me. Well, you're, well, again, uh, uh, Wilkes, his take on it, my take yeah. on it is what some, you know, critics were saying about it, you yeah. know? So when we get into the mic rating a little later, we'll get more specific about some of the reviews, but that is exactly what some folks were saying. It's like, you move slow and you never yeah. got where you were going. If you're going to move that yeah. slow, at least make where you're going. Work yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there wasn't a boom. Yeah, there wasn't like yeah. a yeah. boom at the end. It was just that's a, what was she a said. Yeah. But the thing is, <laughs> what, what, what this, this was this was a intro centric movie for me. Okay. And the reason I say that is because mm. I wasn't looking. I I totally get where y'all were going because I remember around the skating part. I was like, it's moving too slow. Yeah. But as, after yeah. I watched it, I reflected on it. Uh, that's and right. I think yeah. it was a pure the entire setting was a metaphor. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Daniel was trying to say, y'all over there, yeah. you're doing the same thing over here. Yeah, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. And Adrap, don't that don't after what we've done over a few years makes you want that every bad movie you watch, you want to call one of us to talk about it. You know, like what did I miss? You know, because we respect each other's opinion enough to be like, right. okay, maybe he saw something that I didn't see that I should appreciate. Again, that's my redeeming qualities, right? You know, yeah. kind of thing. You know, so which is why we started with the whole whether it was your mic rating before this show. In other words, before tonight's episode, and what was your mic rating after tonight's episode? Yeah. Right? Our influence, I mean, my you guys' influence changes uh, my score often. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. it brings it brings it down. So, yeah. Yeah. you know, you can't, you can't. Let me put it like this: I'm, I wonder if any of our viewers try to try to guess where we're going to be on certain movies based on the movie. Sure. If they follow along and they know what we're about to watch, and they try to pick uh. what we think. Because I promise you, you might get that right half the time, but half the time, you know, I got nobody would have thought I was going to go where I was going to go with Mia Culpa last week. You know, right? I was just a yeah. defender, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. Yeah, it was uh, a double bag of doo-doo for me. <laughs> <laughs> this so, camera. But, 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 it's Ben's you know fault. You should have just left well enough alone. We uh, was yeah. until, you, know, you know what's funny? I didn't, after mentally reviewing it, I didn't watch, I was, I, I checked out and I started drawing parallels. It wasn't a enjoyable, it was almost a documentary for me, if, yeah. if that's, if that's what you think. Because yeah. it was like, ah, uh, mm -mm, nah, that's different. And I was just going, mm, mm, because it was so many parallels with like, I mean, if you ask me, it was a preview of if 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 uh, the Cheeto wins because it's going down, man. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, the Cheeto. Uh, but then think about it this too: Daniel Coulier's directorial deb debut. Now we're talking about what we would consider an, an accomplished actor mm -hmm. in the stage, right? Mm -hmm. And and because of how well he's done over here, you would think that he would be considered for a lot of roles and have a lot of opportunities based on what he's done over here. Right. Mm -hmm. I would gather that he intentionally chose, I'm mm -hmm. going to the crib. Oh yeah. To do this right. because of that, you know, so, so he can get that message across. So that's why mm -hmm. yeah. I, I received your comment as well as I do. H rap is because he could have had this dude is successful enough. Hey, think about it. If we had a screenplay, and we're thinking about, you know, young brothers that we wanted to put in one. Mm -hmm. He would be up there. Uh, Denzel, uh, John, uh, David yeah. Washington would be up there. Well, Keith Stanfield uh, would be up there. Keith Stanfield yeah. would be up there. Mahershala uh, Ali would be up there. Danzig, you know? Huh? Uh, what's his uh Danzig. Uh, he played, what's his name? Snowfall. I can't think his name. Oh, oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt. No doubt. And he's in, in he. Uh, you like over there too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of those cats, man. But you can't tell because their accents and stuff when they're acting. Yeah. No different than an American actor putting on a, 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 a British accent or a whatever. And I'm telling you, these young cats is they, talented, man. Yeah. They they put in work. If you remember Judas and the Black Messiah, how 
he, he and there was an interview he did where he said i i had though i kept watching his tapes i kept watching him talk and he he was able to mimic it to where you couldn't tell mm-hmm. uh, idris elba you and you you would not know hey, unless you heard Danny him talk Richards. yeah 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 and the kid jadiah bannerman who played benji man mm. that kid that was his first role i think man, ever he did pretty well yeah it just so, the story was like uh yeah so so let me ask you this because because uh, again wilkes is probably closer to where i am yeah, there are some redeeming qualities in the movie. Like the skating scene is one mm-hmm. that ranks very highly, right? Yeah. Like, let me just say this. Our mic ratings are are, are basically one through five, okay? Mm-hmm. And if you if you asked us to give scenes mic ratings, there are some scenes that I would give yeah. fives to, mm-hmm. right? You know, mm-hmm. now there's some I would give ones to, but you know right. you get my point, right? So right. we talked about the soundtrack when you were gone. Such old school hits oh. that- uh, uh, that song by Champagne called How About Us, mm-hmm. the right? You know, yep. which you don't get yep. a lot in movies, right? Yeah. So just the forgotten. So for them to go get that one, right. that was dope as far as I was concerned. And of course, Cameo and then some some fresh uh, Afro there was, and stuff like that. There was one, but I can't recall it now. It was done in a Jamaican vibe, but it was um, oh gosh, they slowed it down, but I couldn't remember what it was. It was at the skating rink, actually. Yeah. Because but it was oh, yeah, yeah. Was, I think I know what you're talking about. And they slowed yeah. it, and they remixed it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, thing, think about it. We we thought we had the monopoly on this dancing while skating. Yeah, and, you know, you there's no way. Right. We thought they doing that in London, and I guess right, right. I promise you something. They probably doing it in the big cities in Africa. Uh, the, oh yeah. And, and outside I, of that, which it's not the, it's kind of a different subject, but. uh just like in Japan in the nineties, I mean, rap was good. Big. <laughs> yeah. Rap was huge over, over there in Japan. I mean, they have like what we have here. Like you know, we got the Dr. Dre's and the Snoop Dogg. We got that you know that nineties rap, and of course they always pay homage back to the West. But yeah, I can yeah skating over. Oh, I, I can see that in London. I guess you know as big as it you know kind of caught on like that. Yeah, and 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 in fact, you know, you talk about hip hop being big in Japan. A lot of hip hop artists who are marginal here, and not just hip hop, you know, are yeah. oh yeah, all genres. Yeah. A lot of them who are marginal here are huge overseas, like oh, huge, huge, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, music oh, is. Right. You know, we've said that about music time and time again here, right? It is a transcending tool. Yeah. It's a transcending resource. It is. It is the power of music can't be defined. Right. Yeah, it's a. Um, I was recently watching a documentary. It was this Japanese man? Did you speak about the Japanese? Good night, Mike. He has uh, <laughs> he has a, a record collection of Marvin Gaye that wasn't released really in the state. Yeah, I'm yes. glad you said that. Have you heard some of the Japanese or Asian guys who sing on TikTok and stuff like that? Oh, man, who have such soulful? Oh, music. me, yeah. They couldn't have those without listening to that music. Right. Oh, yeah. oh, absolutely. So that means their parents probably were listening to that music and they heard right. it growing up, right. you know, but it's like, man, there's no way you can get that. I think yeah. there's a, 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 a an Asian group out there, man, that sings got nothing but black gospel mm. and they cold. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. They cold. Generally when yeah. I come across oh. that stuff, I try to share it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Cause yeah. I like to try to expose our folks and stuff. Oh, they, they don't, they right. Don't on the record. Because, because the biggest thing I've always heard growing up and I mean, like you, like H Rap and Doc, like you said, music didn't have color. So, yeah. for when I was growing up, though, it was always, oh, you listening to those white people music? I'm like, what? Yeah, yeah in the '70s. Nah, nah they, I'm like, they listening to our music. I was like, where do you think they got this from? I'm right, like, exactly. I was like, Grand Funk Railroad don't sing like that because they just woke up and decided to sing like that. I was like. Yeah. That's not how that works. Yeah, even this, even the song on this uh, soundtrack, uh, uh, "How About Us" by Champagne. It's my white folks in that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you got a white on the bass. Yeah, they mad. Yeah, I'm telling you right now. If you watch TikTok for longer than an hour yeah. and you tell me you don't see no young white girl on the bass jamming like she right. boots it harder. Right. Oh, absolutely. You, you think you think you think Adele sound like that just because? Right. Like, you have to try to be no boozy. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> she got to be no 
Jesus. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, well, good to know I don't have to do all the work tonight. <laughs> That's what you said. So, uh, so we, we talked about this, Wilkes. <laughs> do you think, you know, when, when, when uh, Izzy and Benji kind of run into each other, you think that was his dad initially, or what, what was your thoughts on that? I, I thought that's where they were going with it. I felt like that's what it was going to – because the way he looked at the screen when he saw that, I guess, his neighbor, but I'm not sure he was knocking the boots, but the point was um, – Knocking the boots. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was. It kind of probably didn't like that comment, boy. She <laughs> can't stop laughing. Hey, the studio audience, yeah. That's well, the white girl in the audience. She really likes the comment. Yeah, she, <laughs> like she on like we watching the uh, Three's Company. So, <laughs> <laughs> whoa, wow, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I thought that's where they were gonna go with that. You know, I mean, even when he left on the motorcycle, he's like, "Hey, man, you know, get away, get away from me, the boat." You know, it's yeah. kind of like one of those things. You know. Now, but, so the, oh, go ahead, go ahead. So one, so one of the debates that we that we kind of had was master debates. At, mm. at the end, when he says, "So are you my Remember. dad?" <laughs> <laughs> and he gave he gave him a subtle nod. Did you see the nod? Did I did. That see, was an answer. I, I did. I think there's that a debate was, on that. I don't know. It, 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 I think it's left yeah. to the perception because. Right. For me, it was just like he knew, like, okay, that's kind of like what he was seeking. But then again, that nod could have been, well, I'm not really sure, but you could yeah. be, you know. It, it just left. It's, yeah. it's, it's, what's that? He was, he was saying, I was smashing. So. Yeah, of course he was <laughs> clapping him. Yeah, he was clapping him. I mean, you know, he was clapping him like him books. Yeah, but your mom was, was, was a so Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just saying. What? Uh, what happened? Uh, I said your mom was a host, oh. so I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. But he couldn't say that, man. It's a kid, yeah. man. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Hey, uh, that, man. real quick uh, to some folks that gave us some uh, hearts, oh. some likes out there. Uh, the educator queen, Mika, Bild- Mick- Mika Baldwin, is in the building. LaWanna yeah. Bradford, we appreciate you. Chris Bass, the best podcast voice out there. Uh, Kendall Whitley, uh, we appreciate y'all. And uh and Luana Bradford we met in Vegas. It was one of the uh doctors we interviewed. Oh, so nice big big shout out to you. Yeah. Surprise, Doc. Sorry. <laughs> Surprise, mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey, that, that girl in the back really feeling them. Jokes. Yeah, yeah. She loose and goosey. Yeah, she's ready. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so so I wanted All to right. get to this kind of last probably topic. We get to the rating, and and then Doc, you had some stuff too. But uh, so the Staples character, you know, Benji was was uh, my notes had Benji was hanging with Staples. Staples was present, but he mm-hmm. wasn't the best option. But I had that there. But as you kind of think about it, he was yes, he was a rebel, but he yeah. was present. So mm-hmm. and Benji needed that. And then he realized, like, oh, I ain't about this life when they started running yeah. into people's houses and stuff like that. Yeah. So, so let's talk about Stables versus Izzy. You know, Izzy ran. He didn't know where he was. He wasn't very vocal. Stables, you knew where he was. He told you where he was. This is what we're going to do. It's war. Yeah. And period. So, yeah. Will, so go to you first. Yeah. I, I mean, I, once again, I, I, maybe I kind of brushed over it, but I, I think it was one of those where Benji, he – he was looking for that constant or consistent figure. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, after reading the description of the movie, because like I said, I didn't, I didn't I'm like, where is this movie going? But it's like, it's down the <laughs> shitter if you ask me. But anyway, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, it, it mentions something about just uh, navigating their lives inside the kitchen or around that area. So I guess that once again, it was just like Benji knew like, Hey, if he's telling me to come hang out with this crew and they're they're solid, they're teaching me things, but yet, you know, Izzy's more like kind of, I'm just going to work, I mind my business, I keep my head down, you know, and that's it. But I think Benji was looking for more of like, okay, I need this, I'm getting this father figure from both men. One's more kind of on the edge. He's rebel, 
But then one seems to be like, okay, well, he's kind of down to earth and willing to teach, kind of teach me things, or he's interested, you know, and he could possibly be my dad. So I, I think it was one of those things where they set it up like that. It, it was warring on both on both fronts. I think the entire movie was like that with Benji because he was caught in the middle. Yeah. So it was just one of those like, man, which way do I go? And what, what am I getting from this? So, and then that's what back to your question. Uh, like you were saying, well, the previous question, like, well, did you catch that nod? Like, do you think that's really his father? I think he's like, okay, I can't get that uh, with uh, Izzy. Oh, not Izzy, but he's one of those the other, Staples. The other yeah. yeah, I can't get that with Staples, but I, I feel I can get that with, with Izzy here. So I think that's why he was kind of like, on that it's it's a war it's a tug this war. was the safer the safer yeah. bet i know this dude is a little off yeah but at least i'm, I'm gonna have somewhere to stay and i'm not right about getting because beat. yeah because yeah exactly because it's one of those things where it's like okay this isn't going great with staples because i they gonna take off running and scatter at least i know <laughs> over here i can be like well you know I'll get your ass in here for that, that street light come on you know, it's one of those kind of things. So, yeah. Got a tat and all the cops got a hey, trap. You were looking funny when they were saying that. Say what you was going to say. No, I was going along with them up until the very end. I, I'm, I'm going to reach back and talk about what you talked about at the very, very beginning. Uh, when we were talking about children, I think it was, it was the, it was the double minds, the double mindset of a child. Mm -hmm. You, you like, like, when we were all we were all raised properly, correct? Hmm. So when you're raised properly, when you walk, when you look out that door, when you look out that that screen door, you look out your window at night, and you got your homies who my mama don't care. Yeah, they, we don't know if their mother cared or not, but they had more leniency. Right. Yeah. We want that. Yeah, but absolutely. Think about this: Who was your favorite teacher in school? Every school had a teacher right. who we we. Mentally, we was like, he's such a jerk. He's so strict. But all yeah. the kids, Miss Watkins, Miss Watkins is mine, right. and we she love was, that teacher. English, senior English, which all of us know, yeah, English was one of the hardest courses you had in high school. Yep. Period. Okay, yep. and our senior English teacher, Miss Watkins, you, people, when you got her as a teacher, when that that was who your senior English teacher was, you was like, yeah. God, dog, uh, yeah, 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 ended up being my favorite teacher probably in all, right. and it's right. how. So, years I remember her name. So with that being said, I think that was what was going on. I want to be a rebel. I want to be a renegade. But I know you innately need structure. Again, I'm posting something tomorrow in my reels that will go right in line with this. It, mm. You know, uh, uh, basically, you, if you want the world to be a better place, Stop saying that these children are man, man, look at this yeah. kid. You wave you wagging your finger at a child for behaving in accordance to the world that you put them in. This young man was put smack dab in the middle of chaos. You lose yeah. the only person who you know. This person, my mother, got my back. If I shoot the Pope, my mama gonna grab the gun and say that was me. Yeah. And I want to rebel because I lost, but mm. I innately know I need this structure to get to to tomorrow because, yeah. oh boy, we go out here and we can do some crazy stuff, but I might die. He got that streak in him, but he also understands that there are boundaries in every situation. And that's what I saw when I saw that, 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 because I, I've lived that clans, clans, I think his name was clans Thomas. And Lamont Booker, they were like big brothers to me. And, and Clarence used to have nudie books. He used the whole, he used an excessive amount of profanity. And I and I and, and he could do a lot of stuff. Lamont Booker, we called him Greg. His middle name was Greg. We called him we called him Greg. Greg, on the other hand, used to teach me in sixth grade. He was teaching me stuff about biology. He was telling me, hey man, you gotta do your, you gotta do your homework, blah, blah, blah. Now Greg cut up too. But I, and, and one day I remember class was handing around. We didn't, they were in eighth grade. I was in sixth grade, and class was handing around uh, some liquor. And I was like, I'm start hanging with Greg. Mm. So you said a couple of things during the thing. You said you and Nate. Who is Nate? You mentioned him a couple of times. 
<laughs> you and Nate. You and Nate. You and I don't know. It's not like a bird. You got a bird in like the, 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 the squirrel. What's bird. Called, uh, Paul, what's the what's the cat's name? The com the comedian that they used to call the squirrel, the the something. Y'all know the white cat, man. Polly Shore. Oh, sure. Oh, well, yeah. You, you could have kept that. I wouldn't have named Polly Shore if you'd have gave me another 15 years. <laughs> That's what it sounds like. I was not thinking about that. Yeah, Polly Shore. He's about funny. I, I I laughed more at the last two funerals I went to. You know why he got you know why he got as much play as he got. His mom. His mom, yeah. He owns one of the biggest, uh, most popular comedy clubs in, in LA. Yep. Uh, where they had the original Fat Tuesday, in fact, right? You know, reviewed store. that too. Which is which is which was which, which is still one of the ways that shows that black folks they, the this power of their dollar mm -hmm. uh, for Tuesday to be the biggest night in comedy across the country, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. for the longest, you know. Um, drones, did, did, wasn't it interesting? The drones, right? That's another peek at yeah. how we will be policed. We are already being policed that yeah, way. Yeah, we just don't know the. It's just stationary yeah. cameras now. Yeah. But yeah, drones. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's freaky still to this day. If you see a drone somewhere, mm -hmm. even a small one. But you, you know, there are places that Amazon is already starting their drone deliveries at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you know that the, for the last year, driverless trucks have been operating, mm -hmm. eighteen wheelers on the roads already. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to add on the staples? Uh no, you yeah. know, you know, I think I said it all early on, but one of the things I did want to add was as far as Izzy is concerned, Izzy told you at the in the first 10 minutes of the film when he was having a conversation with the brother that he worked with at the life after life place, that I hey, when shit go down, I'm a, I'm every man for himself. I'm looking out for me. He said yeah. it. Yeah. Early on, which is why the struggle made sense when he found out, okay, I got Benji now. Do I need to be looking out for him or do i need to stick with what i said i'm looking out for me and, yeah. and guess what he had a choice to make whenever he was okay they yeah. told him early on you got 21 days to pay for this flat that you got one bedroom yeah. so he's moving out of the kitchen that was his plan all along mm -hmm. i'm moving out of the kitchen so there you got a single occupancy or a double occupancy he had signed up for a single occupancy because that's all he needed mm -hmm. he got approved for that as long as you can pay the deposit when he had a choice, he goes, how do I change this to double occupancy? Mm -hmm. They said, well, first, you got to give up the single occupancy. He wasn't doing that. And he so they way went out to eat, and he pulled a whole, I'm going out for cigarettes trick. <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, that was it. Didn't he? I'll be right back. Yeah. You know, he was gone. In 2044, it started in 1964. <laughs> <laughs> and they were still doing it in 2044. I'm going to get a pack of cool fit to King Menthol. Bread. <laughs> and milk. they came back again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, you, you, unfortunately, you, every you time, got a mouth in your mic. Every time you talk, it sounds like Tweety Bird is saying something. <laughs> you did, man. Yeah. I'm going to get you this yeah. mic I got over here. Yeah. Now, now let me let me ask. I, I think I got it. Or do you got it, Ben? No, nah, I think you got it. Okay. Uh, I got brought it over to you. Okay. Um. Hold on. So, I'm 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 gonna put you to the back. All right, we we'll bring oh, you back here in a minute. At least let him look at him. It's just no, just mute it, what, man. What, when I'm muted, it's still making the noise. I don't oh, know. Is it? Maybe it stopped. All right. So. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think he got the double occupancy? Because at the end he said, uh, you know, you can bring this to your to home with you, with us or something like that. he said that. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I think he, he, he made it seem like which he could have stayed either way, but he made it seem like you you coming with me mm -hmm. and this is our home. That's what mm -hmm. I made it seem like he was saying. That's how I received it. Yeah. But was he going? But see, part of me was thinking, okay, is he going to try to get it under the radar? Where he's just gonna let him live with him in the single doc occupancy. That's maybe. You know, or did he find a way once he occupied the single occupancy 
now that I'm in it, can I apply for a double occupancy? Because you got to think that happens too, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Think well, I it. think I think he I think he changed it uh, when he right was in there. line. I think he oh, changed yeah. it, huh? Not he went he moved too quick though. Do you think he changed it right there, Adrian? I think yeah. I think he did. I think he changed it because, like you said, he was set to he was set to break out on 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 shorty, and then he didn't. When it got thick, if he did, then why did he spend them days in that place by himself? If he did the double, I think he had to think it over. Yeah, it was it was the it it was the hey man, I don't even know. But then when it came down to leaving them, humanity kicked in. Cause he did it twice. I don't think he did the double occupancy right away. Cause when they showed him fold down the bed from the place and all that stuff, I think he was still in the single occupancy myself. You thought he was on some Michael Jackson sleeping in the bed with the shorts? <laughs> 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 all right, did, and did y'all uh, did y'all peep the? It was you couldn't see outside, so basically it was a TV screen. Right, you could just change the background. And, he and I think it, he knew it was, and I think he like that. he thought it was going to be this great thing. And then when he got there, and he was like, "I'm just changing yeah. the channel. That's like, another, it's not real." To me, that was another hidden message. You know, you mm-hmm. trying to get and think about what they called it too. They called it Buena Vida, which means good life. Mm-hmm. And spent, that was the name of the place, Buena yeah. Vida, yeah. good life. Yeah. And yeah. he got there, and it wasn't as good as the life he said. So again, back to H. Rap's point that he's made time and time again. Is that when we were poor, we didn't know we was poor because we had a good time, we had fun, we had we were satisfied, we were content, we were happy, etc. You know, so but they gave us something to want. There's better, and they ruined it. There's yeah. better, and it wasn't better. More money, more problems, basically. You know? and, and honestly, if he if he could see outside, he would probably be looking into the kitchen. Because Probably. the buildings were right there. It wasn't right. like it was way across town. So they, they tried to change the perception. Like, no, you're further away. You're away from the kitchen now. He was probably looking directly down on it. And another uh, aspect, too, is that even the people that lived in the kitchen, a lot of them left the kitchen to go to work. Yeah. So they were moving in they and out to. of the kitchen the whole time, which is, you know, again, the raids and and all this kind of stuff. It's like you were... Every day was a risk, and you're getting caught up in a raid because then they started doing it more frequently. Yeah, the drop in, and that last one, yeah, kind of yeah. everybody. The know. reason why is because they started popping the rich folks. So yeah. the more they popped the rich folks, the more they raid. Yeah, and them yeah. drones was just collecting intel. Right. And see, see, that's that's why I was stuck on the metaphoric portion of this because that's what people like Stokely Carmichael and before him, where he got it from. Uh, WB Du Bois called the petty bourgeoisie. What and, and what he meant is you upper class rich black folks, y'all we y'all look down y'all noses and y'all living in the same conditions. It's just that you believe that you are that you are not mm-hmm. living there. But they are it's it's the same fight, it's just a different round, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. what I believe. That's why I was that's why I stopped looking for the purpose and start looking for the connections. Mm-hmm. All right, well, well, let's let's get to the mic rating. Before we do that, let's uh, watch a trailer of what we'll be reviewing next week. When we get back, we will get into the final thoughts and mic rating. How did you come to write this book? What really struck me was that too few books were about my people. Where are our stories? Where's our representation? Would you give us the pleasure of reading an excerpt? Yo, Sharonda! Girl, you be pregnant again? If I is, Ray Ray is gonna be a real father this time around. Thank you. Monk, your books are good, but they're not popular. Editors, they want a black book. They have a black book. I'm black, and it's my book. You know what I mean. Look at what they published. Look at what they expect us to write. I just want to rub their noses in it. (laughs) I'd be standing outside in the night. Deadbeat dads, rappers, crack. You said you wanted black stuff. That's black, right? I see what you're doing. We sold your book. 
No. We believe Mr. Lee has written a bestseller. It's a joke. The most lucrative joke you've ever told. Now, is Stag a pseudonym? Yeah. Mr. Lee can't use his real name. Is this based on your actual life? Yeah, you think some bitch-ass college boy can come up with that shit? No, no. No, I don't. Can I ask what you were in for? Was it murder? Yeah, you said that, not me. They ran 300,000 copies. Your books changed people's lives. They're offering $4 million for the movie rights. Yes! The dumber I behave, the richer I get. too far. Stag Arley is still on the run for authorities. You haven't done anything. It's not like they can arrest you. Yeah. Wish I could go back to not selling books. Is it bad to cater to people's tastes? People want to love you, Monk. You should let them love all of you. There's already so much buzz because of the movie deal. Michael B. Jordan is circling. We want to put him on the cover in one of those um, uh, scarves, I guess you would call them, tied around his head. A do-rag? Do-rag, that's it. Do rag in a tank top with the muscles showing. Oh, something called the fire department. <laughs> We're thinking we can get it out in time for Juneteenth. Mm. Fantastic. There's a lot of Bad. levels on that one, man. A lot of levels on that one. Jeffrey Jeremy Wright. Wright. Jeremy Wright, real quick. Jeffrey man. Wright, man. God, God. Jeffrey. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But anyway, he's, he's a great actor. And yeah. you got Sterling K. Brown in it as well, which is one of my favorites. Um, mm -hmm. He is the brother that played in This Is Us, you know, the drama series uh, on TV. Uh, and he's played in a couple of films that we uh, looked at as well. But yeah, Jeffrey Wright, and, and for some people are saying his best performance, the best performance of his career, and Jeffrey Wright's had some bangles, man. Yeah, so, um, yeah that's ought to be interesting. Yeah, and, and so just because I think some people think, well, this is made by a white director to basically just make fun of us, but it's actually by a black director. And his whole thing was to to basically say, like, they, uh, we we can only be one way. And, and so, and I'm sure there'll be different moments in the, in the film. Issa Rae, another quality actor, director. Yeah, and all we that. saw her at the uh, Super Bowl. She was there? Yeah. I don't remember yeah. her. Okay. You, you, hey, sorry, you didn't get out like I got out. <laughs> All right, final thoughts. Final thoughts migrating. Uh, let's get Wilkes out of the way. Let's read his real quick. He said, sigh, great, dot, dot, dot. Well, one mic for me. Right. Technical difficulties and brain farts tonight. But, so we got one down. Uh, Doc. Um, well, as I always do, I'll talk about uh, the reviews. IMDb, 4.8 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes, 89%. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Metacritic, 68%. Uh, again, a lot of the uh, reviewers and critics output, you know, talked about the potential of the plot, but the, uh, uh, and the premise, you know, of the movie, but the, the script slow moving uh, and whatnot. But it did give a big heads up to the visuals. Uh, cinematography and some of the performances, you know, which I would have to agree with. Uh, as a result, I started off at a two and a half mics before mm -hmm. the show, and I ended up at a three. I ended up at a three. I increased it a bit, but I can't go. I can't, in good conscience, uh, <laughs> uh, go above a three. <laughs> Are we going with a three? Right. So got a one and a one and a three. Uh, HR. I'll give it a five. Mice. Out of here. Okay. <laughs> I'm about to say. <laughs> I've been saying. Awkward. I'm not going that high. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that might have been the funniest shit you done said in, in the three years of the forecast. <laughs> I'll give it a three, man. This is extremely average. Um, I, I pulled out the thing. Like I said, I stopped looking for the meaning and started looking at the parallels that he was drawing. It was, it's, a, it's, a, it's a social project for me. That's why I, I enjoyed it more than a, just a movie. I saw it as a social project. And when you're looking at it as a social project, it hits you different. So yeah. when I'm looking at it as a social project, I'm going, oh, well, that's what that was. And see, it hits like here, here, here. So yeah. I, I made that. I, that's why I got it there. You know, and see, so and our 
just in our reviews, man, just think about uh, what it says about us as a society and what we need to be working on. It's because we can't, we arrived at the same place with two different routes, man. Mm-hmm. You know, but think about how often we don't listen and hear the other person out mm-hmm. when we're having just a conversation about life or whatever. Mm-hmm. And in our likelihood, we actually come to the same conclusion. We actually mm-hmm. see it in a very similar way, you know, with the same value, same importance, you know, but we just got to that place differently, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I, I liked it, man. I, I felt like the acting was not great, but the main Izzy was a, is a rapper and a, and a, something else. He's not even an actor. Uh, the, you know, uh, Benji is his first time acting. I don't know about the other guy, but, but like the music, which the the soundtrack or the score was done by an artist named uh, Labyrinth. He did uh, Euphoria. If anybody's heard of that on on HBO, he's done some other Great stuff. Show by the way. Great yeah, show. So the music I felt was was perfect for this. Um, initially, I had a four and a half, uh, but I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go down to a four. Damn. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Damn. Sound like Kevin Hart when he was right. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I'm 55. I didn't, like, mean, like that. I didn't mean to say it like that. <laughs> but uh I feel like it just had to me, I like that suspense, that suspense, the unknown. Uh I, I like that part of the of the film. It had a lot of that. Yes, it was slow, but I think it it you didn't know you you never really understood who Izzy was. You knew he was just he, just, he was just there, really, but yeah, uh, yeah. And, and then, <laughs> that, gave, that gives us an average of two point seven five. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Did I say that? You? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, whatever. That means I wasn't listening to the shit he was saying. <laughs> I know. That's why I was like, "Yeah, get over with this." <laughs> <laughs> The two point seven five is our average. All right, got it, got it. All right, American Fiction next week. Uh, End of the bench. You already kind of talked about it. Anything you want to? I just want to add one more thing about this movie. Uh, 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 Referencing last week, remember I was saying the Kelly didn't do so well because of the poor attempt. You know, the the poor effort at directing. And we saw this week the young man and the other actors elevated because. My man was doing his thing, but uh, tomorrow it's 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 entitled the why behind the why. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna talk about people like Wesley Hunt and this ID debacle that he put out there. You know, he tried. You know, basically, my episode tomorrow will be about at the end of the day, most black people are conservatives, and if. Rich white folks just shut up. They probably get the whole black community on the Republican side, but they just keep, they can't get out their own racist way. Mm. <laughs> just look, <laughs> black people love Jesus. Black yeah. people work hard. Black people don't want you stealing their stuff. Yeah. But y'all got to throw the race in and blow it for yourself. Yeah, and so, we don't, and we want our rights at the end of the day. Black folks ain't trying to give up no rights, but they don't, you know, again, packaging in some free shit. <laughs> hey, hey, tell me a lie. Tell me a lie. See, yeah. you know what? Re- the Republican Party is a bad cheating boyfriend. Where were you at? All you really have to say is, I was with Ben and Dawn. But what cheating boyfriends do, I used hey, to be much. one. I used to be one. Hey, too much. Well, we go. I was at being in doghouse. See, we was drinking cold 45 at 7 15 and by 9 28. It was like, who remembers that? Right. That exact time. You lied. <laughs> and that's what they do. Have you ever been telling the truth but knew you were talking too much and it made you feel like you wasn't being <laughs> Yeah. I've been telling yeah. the truth I, because I talk so much. I'm like, this product doesn't sound believable, but I'm telling them the truth. No, that's, look, look, that's what I'm saying. Like in my 20s, I can remember saying, I know this sound like a lie, <laughs> but you can't tell on yourself, I was messing with Jenny last week. This time, I wasn't lying. <laughs> That's what I this said. Time, I, I wasn't I, there. That wasn't me. Because I, I, can remember, I can remember when I got off BS and I had told 458,000 lies and yeah. it was like, 
when I and then that's when I realized one I, I remember the day and, and, and it was assumed that I was lying. I was like, I ain't did it. And just sat down and watched TV. <laughs> I was like, hey, you, you gonna believe it or not? I, I ain't do it. And and she walked away like that nigga ain't, he ain't lying. And I was like, I knew that was the key. <laughs> so yeah, Republican Party, they just some horrible boyfriends. Yeah. They some horrible cheap boyfriends. Yeah. So if y'all just shut up. Y'all could take all our rights. Just say, and oh yeah. But with that being said, I am going. I can't say what I'm really thinking, but I'm gonna say it in a black way so all the black people understand what I'm saying. And it's it's using Chicago street vernacular, but I'm sure because y'all black, y'all gonna get it. The mayor of DC, the mayor of uh, the mayor of DC, the mayor of Philadelphia, the mayor of New York. They need to get moved, though. Mm -hmm. Because when I tell y'all what they've done, it's criminal. It is truly, I was joking, I was being facetious a second ago, but what they've done, they need to get moved, though. Mm -hmm. And it, it is whore freaking horrific. It's not funny, and it's not even it's not even laughable, and that's all I'm gonna say about that. Tune in tomorrow, but if you, if you hey, you know what, I will because I know you'll be you you'll be getting ready for your program. I'll even text you the, the minute marker so you could just go right back to it. So you yeah. because you you need to hear this, okay. and it is it is it's scary, and I used this term and it kind of threw you off last week. And you had me explain it. I said it's blackface whiteness. Mm -hmm. This is the dictionary definition of blackface whiteness. Gotcha. I promise yeah. you, I'm gonna remember that. And when I say I'm gonna be, you know, because I, I like like even what I was showing now, I, I I'm actually listening as we go, and that's how I edit myself. So I'm going to da, 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 and I'm going to minute marker. That thing, and I'm, what I am going to do, I'm going to even turn that into a short because it has to be said. And this is why we we must download the app called Politicking because Politicking lets you know what dog, what being, what H rap voted on and how they went politically. So we won't be electing jerks. We'll be re electing people who are working in our best interest, no matter what their pigmentation holds. Yeah. All right, tomorrow, 6, uh, six o'clock? 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Yep. 7 p.m. Central Standard Six. 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 All right, Queen 3 and King tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow on Queen 3 and King, The Power of Love, with special guest hosts Victor and Katra Lee. Uh, and we're gonna talk about it. Y'all done heard it. Y'all done heard uh Hugh and Lewis in the news sing about it. Y'all done heard Luther Vandross sing about it. Uh, you know, they're... skinny Luther or fat Luther? Uh, skinny no, Luther. Fat. No, no, wait for oh, love. Fat Luther. Oh, no, the power of love. Oh, 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 the power. Yeah, that's that was the first. That was on that old album. He looked like Dracula. On. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna discuss that and all that it implies. You know. uh it, it ought to be interesting, you know. Uh, love is one of those topics, man. That love is. we use it so often that it's lost its luster. People throw it out there so much, right? Mm -hmm. um, which is why I remember being when we were getting taught on love, we we replaced that to a certain extent with respect and value. If you're mm -hmm. trying to tell somebody you love them, you need to add I respect and value you. Yeah. You know, because love is thrown around so often, which is a sad thing because of the whole God is love, you know. So right. uh, anyway, we'll talk about that tomorrow. It ought to be interesting uh, conceptually. And I expect to learn something new from somebody yeah. for tomorrow. So tomorrow, seven o'clock central time right here on BS3 Network and our Roku TV channel, YouTube TV channel and Twitter. Yes, and no matter yeah. how serious the topic, I'm going to act a fool. So tune in. <laughs> That's a fact. That's a fact.
All right, uh, a trap, go ahead and close. I'm out. dropping that link in fan base too, y'all. Oh, yeah, the little TV thing, and it's, it's it's real simple YouTube thing, TV, just a little TV looking thing. You tap it, drop the link in there, and then and it's live. Yeah, definitely. Um, y'all already know, man, it's Tuesday, close to the end of the month. So if I owe you something, I ain't got it. And if you need it, get it from God. <laughs> God, God, God. Oh, Thank you, yeah. Please.